All right, hey everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn all about analog inputs as we use a photoresistor here in order to make this cool little automatic nightlight that when it's time to go to bed and the lights go off and it gets dark, it turns right on there for you so you could feel cozy and safe as you dream your night away. So let's look at some of the electronics behind this. Uh, what's going to be really useful for us is a multimeter and you can see my multimeter right here, which I think you can. And we have this red probe and this black probe. And as you put them into different spots on the circuit, it will allow you to measure the amount of volts that are at that specific point. So you can see that I have my power supply right here and you have, I have five volts, just like the Arduino going into the plus rail and then I have the ground going into the minus one and then I have two resistors two 10k resistors which are identical goes here and here and then back in the ground and this is my multimeter where the red the positive one goes in between the two resistors and then the black goes down into ground so let's start this and see what happens you can see that it's at 2.5 volts, which is exactly half of the five, uh, the five volts, which is the initial power supply. And the reason that it's like that is because these two resistors are exactly the same. They're both 10K. And if I were to change this, like if I were to make this weaker, you could see that this increases to 4.5 volts. And that's because the resistors spread the voltage around them proportionally. So if you were to think back to our hose analogy, where the resistor kind of squeezes the water just like the hose, so there's less flow. If we were to squeeze this less lightly, there would be more water going in here. And then after you got by here, there would be less. If you were to, if I were to make this stronger, now that's all the way down to 455 millivolts. So that now we're squeezing this really strong and there's barely any um, there's barely any voltage left to, um, uh, to deal with. And that's why before, if you had a resistor that was too strong with your LED, that's why the LED wouldn't light up because all the voltage is being taken by that strong resistor. So we are gonna use this knowledge, I'm gonna throw that back to 10K. We are gonna use this knowledge in order to use this photoresistor. And a photoresistor is just basically a resistor that as the light increases on it, it just has less resistance. It's a variable resistor. So I'm gonna throw the, I'm gonna replace this with that. And then I'm gonna connect this in the ground. And now as I start the simulation, you could see initially there's no light on it. So it's much stronger. So this is absorbing almost all of the voltage, which is why this is so high just like when we changed this before. Now, if I increase this, it goes lower and lower and lower and lower because the resistance is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. This resistor, the first one, is becoming proportionally stronger, it's squeezing all the current so there's less and less and less to go through the photoresistor. And we are going to use this bit of knowledge in order to have our Arduino control when the light goes on and off. So let's go to this next circuit right here. I have the, uh, the same setup like I did over here. I have five volts, goes into the plus, then ground, which goes into the minus, and then I have a 10K resistor that goes up the photoresistor and then back in the ground. Now, instead of the voltage going into the multimeter, I have it going into the analog input, pin A0. And before we were using these pins, the digital pins, and we had a push button, which if we pushed it, it gave a signal to these. And these are digital, so they could be either on or off, high or low. This analog one has a much greater range of values that it could read. So we are going to use this in order to determine when we want to turn on that light. So I have this input going into A0, and then I have the LED set up just like before. So it goes out from 13, up the anode of the LED, through, that should be a different value of resistor, through a 330 ohm resistor, 
and then back in the ground. You can see my setup right here, which is should be the same, but it's just uglier and harder to read. Let's go into programming. I am going to set up pin 13 so that we can turn it on. So 13, output in all caps. And I am going to use a serial monitor. Serial, oops, dot begin at 9600 baud. Then down here, just like before, I'm going to make a variable. I'll call this photo, but you can call it whatever you want. And it is going to equal, just like before, we had a digital read before. However, this time we are doing an analog read. And we're just going to put in zero. Oh, one thing. It, the analog, they default to an analog input. So you do not have to put it in void setup. That's why I didn't put that up there. So if you're using the analog read feature on the analog pins, you do not have to write anything up there. It will just automatically know what to do with it. So I got photo and now I am going to serial print. Serial.print ln, and we are going to print photo, see what the value is. And I will let it delay a little bit, half a second. And let's upload this guy. Let's try my serial monitor. 300, 300, 290. Let's try changing this here. See, as I go over, it goes high. If I were to turn my light on here that I have on there, it goes even lower. So the more light, the less resistance, and the less light, the more resistance. And we could use this value to do whatever we wanted to do with it. We could use it just to sit here and watch it scroll down, but that's not a good use of it. So what we want to do is we want an if statement where if the value is a certain amount, I'll have it be greater than 800 because that seemed to be my threshold, but you can mess around with yours to be whatever you want. And if it's not, if it's less than 800, we want the light to go on. So we could have two if statements. However, there's a better solution and that's the if then else statement. So for now, I'm going to do if uh, photo, if it is greater than 800, then we want to digital write high. I spelled digital write wrong, digital write, pin 13, high. Now we have this statement too, where we could do else, something else happens. So if this condition is true, this will happen. However, if it is not true, then this will happen. And it's way more elegant to write it like this than having a bunch of if statements. So I'm gonna do, whoops, I don't need that. Then I want to turn it off. Digital write, 13. Nah, I'm really bad at typing, like shockingly bad. There we go. And now I am just going to delay this a tenth of a second each time. And I have this, I don't need this anymore. And I get kind of annoying just watching it there. So I could delete it, but I might need it in the future. So you can see these little slashes right here. Those allow you to make comments. And uh, the Arduino will just ignore anything with these slashes in front of it. So if I go like that, now it is still there. If I want to use it, I could delete those slashes um, or I could just keep it like this. So it's better than deleting it if you might use it later or if you wanted to kind of organize your code. So, you know, if then statement to, and it's a really good habit to get into to start commenting on your code. So I am going to upload this. You can see no more serial monitor because it ignores that. And now if I go like this, it works. I could change this. So if I wanted to, Let me try with this light here. I think that might be better. All right, that's at 186. Three. So now if it's less than 200, it's 
So now it'll be off. If I turn it on, it'll it'll turn on. Oh, I wanted it the opposite, but whatever. You can mess around with that however you want. And uh, so I hope that was helpful and have a good one. Later.